Good morning. How you doing? How you been? This is Danny Daniels. I know I'm really sporadic with my videos and one day I might pick it up. Who knows? I don't know. Sometimes I'm busy working and sometimes I'm busy working, meaning I'm writing and I don't know. I just, I try to live this thing called life. <laughs> so since this, this is not my venue, my avenue to generate wealth or create an income, I don't, I'm sporadic with my videos, but last night I was interacting with this gentleman who, I don't know if this is how, this is his only source of income, but he makes this video, these videos about white men with black women. And he's been doing it for a long time. In my opinion, after a while, this material would just dry out, but he's been consistent. I don't listen to all of his stuff, but I listen to some. Last night I interacted with one because it was interesting and needy women get on there and they just think, I don't know, they tell him how cute he is and all this, like he's going to call him or something. I don't know. But sometimes women come off as extremely desperate and that's sad. It's, it's, it's really sad when a woman presents herself as being that desperate. And even if I really desired someone really, really a lot, I wouldn't make it that obvious. You know, I'd be kind of a little coy, a, a little bashful, you know. I would give him signs to let him know that, that I'm interested. But I wouldn't approach a man and be all, yeah, so, you know, I think you're really cute and we should go out and so here's my phone number, so call me. And then if I saw him again, well, you didn't call me. Some women actually do that. And to me, that's crazy. <laughs> I don't have a problem with a woman pursuing a man, but ooh, to just drip all over him. Mm. And it takes your strength away. If you drip all over a man, that lets a man know that he can walk all over you. And I don't know if white men do it, but I know for sure, for sure, black men do. You let a black man know he can walk all over you. Oh, honey, his feet are always on your back and on your neck and tearing you down. And some man will tear down a woman who has their child. He, a man will, if it's in his mind to tear a woman down, he'll tear a woman down. I've been there. <laughs> I didn't drip all over this man or anything, you know. Uh, we were both mutually attracted to one another. And I didn't realize that he was a narcissist. My whole life became just pleasing this man, that was everything. And everything we did had to flow around what he wanted to do. And being in the church and, and, and I'm going to use the word caught up. And that's a distasteful word when you're talking about church to say caught up. It's distasteful because you want to have a relationship with God that is not like a cult, that is not like a fad. It, you want it to be real. But most of the time, in faith, in religion, the people who are involved are just caught up in it. Either their parents took them there, and so now they have to continue going to church, whether they want to or not, but that's the way they do it. They were raised in church. It's all day Wednesday, all day Sunday. You know, you got first service, second service, and then you got evening service, and, you know, you just caught up in, in the church, and that becomes your whole life. Is I've grown in the church, I have learned some things differently. And I'm not going to get on that because I don't want to become a stumbling block for anybody because I think that the Bible and going to church is a very good stepping stone. And, and it's the gateway into your spirituality and you developing a personal relationship with God. This is my best friend. She's coming here. We're, we're going out to lunch today. Normally, you don't see Danny in a dress, but today, and that's another thing. I never wear dresses. I really don't. So I'm wearing one today because... Because it's nice and cool out. Right, Mary Elizabeth? It's nice and cool out. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I got caught up in this video about the differences between white men, the way white men hold a black woman, and the way black men hold a black woman. White men are very timid. It is the gentleman said in this video, it's true. Most of them are, are timid and they're timid because they get caught up in that stereotype of, can I 
be a better lover or be just as good a lover is a black man, especially if they know that that black woman has experienced black love and black love is beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And the right. (laughs) And the flip side of that interracial love that can be beautiful as well. But in the beginning, a lot of times the white man, he, he moves a little slower He's timid. And so I was suggesting to this this young man and for his viewers that there is a difference. You would think maybe, you know, lover basically, you know, men and women are men and women and it's all the same. But there's not and it's not because society has taught us to separate ourselves. So since society has taught us that for a lot of white men, black women are taboo. Black women are just something that it's a curiosity for them. They're curious. They want to know more. But there are some white men who genuinely desire black women and vice versa. And there's some black women who pursue white men and shun black men. That's a whole nother topic in and of itself as well. We're not going to get into that. But (laughs) back to a timid white male lover. If you want to get the most out of your white male lover, You need to watch him and pay attention to him. He's giving you signs and clues. And yes, he's gentle. And yes, he's timid. And they are looking for the buy-in. They're looking for that approval. So you need to be audible with your oohs and your ahs and your go slow and faster and deeper and all of that. And they're listening to you because they want to please you. So sometimes if you've experienced some black love that's just been a little forceful, a little dominant, not towards your liking, and then you get a white experienced lover and you say, white men are better lovers, not necessarily. And you can't love anybody better unless you know that person. So it's a learning process. So I would say, pay attention to your lover, watch him. And with a white man, especially when he's moving and he's touching you gently and you know, those little pressure points, especially around here, around your neck. Now, all of that is wonderful. But if you don't want your experience to be over quickly, do not say things like, I want you to come. Because if you tell him that, that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to do it because he wants to please you. So if you want to prolong that intimacy, you know, just still be audible because that's a turn on. And every now and again, smile. <laughs> Smiling while making love, that's hot. That's some sexy shit. So I wouldn't be remiss and not do try it out. Try it out and then get back to me and say, Danny, ho, 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 ho. Oh, yeah, he liked that. Oh, yeah, you want, you want to keep it up. You want to make that erection last. You know what I'm saying? Ride it out. Short rides are nice when you're in a hurry and you got something to do. But mm, there's nothing like a nice, long ride. I'm Danny Daniels. Have a great day.